Hi everyone, my name is Marius and today I will be recording a couple of videos which will be covering zero touch provisioning of the branch gateway using Mobility Master 8.0, right? And we're going to be using Activate to do that. In video one, we will be basically doing an adding of the branch gateway to Activate. There's a couple of settings I'll show you. In video two, I'll basically add the branch gateway to Mobility Master and VPNC and the settings that's required there. In video three, we will actually connect the branch gateway, zero touch provision. It will first writerize it and then connect it to the internet. And if steps one and two were done properly, it should then basically self-deploy. So as of now, I have a running environment. This environment is running in Santa Clara in the United States. And I have an Activate account. I've got a Mobility Master right now set up waiting for, of course, a new devices to be added. I've got a VPNC already connected to that Mobility Master, as you can see with the IPsec tunnel, right? And that IPsec tunnel is already in place, so this video is not about covering that setup. It's more a case of when we take this branch gateway, um, as you can see at the bottom here, and we finally connect it to the World Wide Web, that everything works. But as we know with zero touch provisioning, you can't just take a device out of the box, switch it on, and it knows exactly what to do there's got to be some initial configuration. Now, the idea behind zero touch provisioning is not to do that on the branch gateway or the end device in the branch as it requires a certain skill set to be connected to that device to change the configuration. Right, so what Aruba does is something called activate. And in activate, there will be a basic configuration, which I'll show you today, that you'll utilize and you'll point it towards the correct mobility master and VPNC. So that would be what I want to call config one, just a basic config to point you in the right direction. There's nothing sinister about this configuration. There's no routing in that configuration. It's simply a connectivity, what I need to connect to at what time, right? And once I basically connect to the VPNC and I have a secure connection, a secure connection, I will then utilize that secure connection to pull down a configuration that we'll cover in video two. But Let's not jump the gun here. Let's see this goes to video one. So in video one, as I said before, you need an activate account. So the way things work is, if you actually buy equipment from Aruba, they will basically initiate you with an activate account. It's an account that lives on the internet. It's almost and pretty much a software as a service, right? Installation, it's on the cloud itself. So as long as you've got the internet connectivity, um, you should be able to get your Activate account. Once you log into your Activate account, if you actually purchase some equipment from them, you'll find inside your Activate account a list of equipment, a list of devices. Right. And the list of devices depends on what you actually bought from them. Today, things like switches, uh, APs, and of course, the branch gateways will be listed inside these list of devices that you've purchased. The idea behind Activate is that you somewhere along the line want to take a, a device and point it towards a specific configuration um, that it needs to basically connect to. So in this case, let's say this branch gateway needs to connect to Mobility Master, and this is all within one country. So the Mobility Master, you can have multiple VPNCs all over the world. Yep. You could have uh, maybe some different Mobility Masters for multiple customers, depending on how you set it up. Right. And you can have branch gateways connected to different VPNCs. So that's why um, we can't start off with an initial configuration by default. What we need to do is we need to go to this activate itself, look at your list of devices and make a decision that this branch gateway, let's call it ABC for now as a MAC address, MAC address because that's how they identified. All right, ABC needs to go to Mobility Master 8, let's say um, in a specific country and that VPNC. So in the list of devices there, you'll take the ABC and you would connect it, right, to an actual folder. So you connect it, basically tie it up with a folder. Inside this folder, what you would have is, you will have some config. And part of that config would, for instance, be your mobility master Mac plus IP address. It would be your VPNC, Mac, plus IP address, 
and pretty much what this is is just a managed device or a standalone device whatever the case may be so there's some settings that you'd set up for initially as this device starts up you connect it to the internet it gets an IP address it will then go to activate with its MAC address be associated with first of all the right activate account and inside the activate account it will go to a correct folder and from that folder it will get a configuration and that configuration would be required to make the connection to the VPNC and Mobility Master to pull down the final configuration. Good, let me show you how that works. So I've already set this up uh, for us and all we need to do now is just go to it, log in and once we've logged in um, you will see that um, we basically will have a list of devices inside this network. So that's my activate account. Obviously, I don't own thousands of branches. I have a couple of branches that I work with. And these are some of the engineers I also work with as well that actually utilizes this infrastructure. So let's look at a specific device, my one that I've got right next to me right now. Even though it says provisioned right now, if I were to go and erase the configuration and reboot that device, it will end up in the very same place over here. Right, initially it won't show provisioned, right, because if it wasn't provisioned before, but at this case I've already provisioned this before. So what do we know about this device? Well, it's a device itself, so you've got a list of devices, as I said before. You look at the MAC address that's on site, then you go to the setup. And from the setup you could have multiple folders in here. In my case I only have two folders, I've only got two ways of doing this, right? I have an intra-connectivity infrastructure and I've got an inter-connectivity infrastructure. So this is from the internet and this is within the infrastructure itself. Since I'm going to go to the internet, I look at the MD branch. In the MD branch, I've got a couple of rules. Some of these rules are there for notification purposes so I can see when people connect onto my infrastructure. And some of those rules or one of those specifically rules is a provisioning rule. This is the one I now focus on at the moment. So in the provisioning rule, as you can see, I'm going to go to edit and show you. There's a couple of decisions I can make. Well, first of all, it's a provisioning rule. This provisioning rule says it's a folder parent, uh, sorry, a parent folder is another uh, uh, folder, right? It's redundancy level is level two, redundancy level. Um, if I remove this, I'll remove one of my mobility master as a backup. And right now, I can actually specify two. So the config note path, I'm not too worried about at the moment. I set it up on the mobility master itself. So my primary master controller at the moment is the MAC address of my mobility master. I've got an internal IP address, and I'll explain that just now. I've got a secondary master controller. As you can see, that's just the MAC address, no IP address at the moment. If I do remove this redundancy, you'll see that that disappears. I've only got a primary mobility master. Then I've got a master controller IP, like I said before, but then of course, after that, there is no other mobility master. If I should put this back, level two, I should have a option to put in the second MAC address again. Right, the primary VPN concentrator, VPNC, MAC address and IP address, and secondary VPN concentrator, MAC address. Country that I'm in right now is Netherlands, and of course, I've got the name of the rule. I'll just cancel this out. I don't wanna mess things up. So that's the rule. Right, it's connected to a folder, the rule to the folder, and what I do is, I then go to the device that's in the Netherlands, and I just make sure it is connected to the correct folder, MD branch. And this is a managed device. If you look at this, you've got multiple things that can actually happen there. You can actually set up multiple de devices. But for this case, in this case, I set it up as a managed device. And I can, of course, give it a name, which is Aruba MV branch 01. Okay, so that is pretty much what you can set up in the Activate. You have to make sure that you've got the correct MAC addresses and IP addresses. And as I said in the previous uh, uh, comment, uh, I use an intra, an inter, basically, I'm not common, a private IP address. Now, because I'm going to establish a VPN connection, IPsec connection, between the branch gateway and the VPNC, um, there will be some routing data flowing between those two and I would basically know how to get to because that will be my default gateway to get to the VPNC and VPNC knows how to get to Mobility Master. Right, 
So, and that's basically the setup that you need to have from Activate's point of view. Thank you very much. And um, if you like this video, please let us know. Um, if you have any comments about the video, please put it in the comment section. And if you want to see the forward looking uh, videos as they arrive, uh, please subscribe to the channel. Brilliant. And see you in the next video. Thank you.